we're yeah. sorry you're out, but it is lovely for us to, to have you back. Thank you. So for how me. did you find the whole experience? Everything you thought it would be or not? Or... It was just surreal, yeah. you know, to find myself in, in a house with so many people. Well, actually, I didn't know many of them when mm -hmm. I walked in. So, but it was a great experience. I had a lot of fun. I've made some good friends and I have not got a single regret about yeah, yeah. going in. Uh, and my why kids are still speaking in? to why, me. Yeah, why did you? Because it is a big thing. Well, you two know. Yeah, it's yeah. a big decision to make, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. three Ooh. survivors here, aren't we? <laughs> We've been to hell and back, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, why did I go in? I kind of wanted to keep the spotlight on the things that I've talked about. Mm. Um, it was nice to get paid for it. Yeah. Um, but I, I was frightened about going in that it might... I might get bad press and I might come out my kids weren't speaking to me or I might end up in the jacuzzi with no clothes on in the middle of the night. <laughs> you didn't do that. But I didn't do that. Didn't so do that. I just thought, you know, life is an adventure. Yeah. You should learn and grow and experiences are what make you do that. I mean, you said so. you... Yes, absolutely. You said you... You wanted to keep the spotlight on all the work that yeah, you I had did. done about um, grooming. Um, yeah. Did you get to talk about it much? Obviously, the show is edited and they don't show every conversation that's had, and you two both know that and how things yeah. are edited can throw a different light on things. How do you feel now you're out? Were you well represented, do you think? I think I can. I was myself. You know, I really was myself. But when you're in there, you're in this bubble and you don't know what's being shown on the outside. Mm. So I did have lots of really serious, interesting conversations mm. because it's the year of the woman mm. and I... Really, I had no right to be in there because I'm not a celebrity. I'm just an ordinary person. Who's no, but the no, fact of the very work that you that's did... That's what the year of the woman's about. That's what it's all yeah. about. Well, that's what people have said to me since I've come out. Yeah. But when I was in there, I was talking about, you know, the police, about the criminal justice system, about homelessness, zero hours contracts, um, poverty, minimum wages. And, and were people listening or were they avoiding you? No, like a no, we had... Oh, quick, Maggie's coming. <laughs> <laughs> don't well, start. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but those conversations haven't been shown, mm. which... And, you know, it's an entertainment show. I do um, think it's a shame, though, because it is Woman of the Year. I was actually... I, I was under the misconception. I thought the men were just going in for one day. I, I didn't wish they were going in and staying. Because yeah. I thought it would have been amazing here as a woman to have just women there. Yeah, Because the amazing conversations that come out of yeah. And did it change the dynamic when the... I yeah, mean, had you enjoyed yeah. it before they came in? Did you still enjoy it when the men came in? Yeah, it was just different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just went with the flow. But yeah. I've come out and I'm happy with... You know, I've not come out to bad press and, yeah, you know... Yeah, didn't, yeah. Well, you've, you know. Co you've come out with enormous respect and the fact that you had a platform and people, you know, know yeah. you for what the work that you do. But we were having a chat about the sex offenders register. What's your view on it? Did you hear that story? That I this did. is a 19-year-old who thought his girl... Well, she told him that she was much older and she turned out to be 14. And obviously they'd had sexual yeah. relations and he's now on the sex offenders register. Are there many like that? I think it's a tightrope to tread. I mean, in my job, I remember dealing with the, um, parents who had come in because their 15-year-old daughter had been... had gone to a, a, a flat with a 16-year-old and they wanted him to be prosecuted for sexual right. offences. I think he might have been 17, actually. And I had the conversation with them that, you know, under the letter of the law, maybe they've broken the law. Mm. But if that was my daughter... Would I really want her to stand in a court of law at 15, mm. um, accusing somebody who might have thought she was over 16 of rape? That's, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion, but in my personal opinion, that's very different from, say, the Rochdale case where you've yes. got 50-odd-year-old yeah. men mm. who are having sex with 12-year-olds. Yeah. That, to me, is a paedophile. Yeah. Yeah, mm. This might be... Yeah. You know, that's my... Yeah. You actually spoke to the... Cos you're so close, aren't you, to, yeah. to, to the girls? And you actually spoke to them about, before you went into Big Brother and explained to them about going in, didn't you? No, I didn't. Oh, no, I read, sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't. I wasn't allowed to because oh. uh, I love them to pieces, but they wouldn't be able to keep a secret. Oh. But I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got it would have been all over the paper. <laughs> but I wrote them a letter. Oh, OK. So I've spoken to them since I've come out and they, they're all watching Celebrity Big Brother and then they're, they're sort of like this and then... <gasps> 
<gasps> There's Maggie! Oh, how wonderful. But the next well, morning listen, I, I hope received a letter. I hope they're watching today because the other reason that uh, you're here is that you're going to be taking part in our Never Too Late to Tell campaign That's with Cyra. Right. You're, you're kind of moving this on That's a right. bit, we're, we're basically moving it on to the next phase and I feel absolutely honoured and privileged to be working with you on this. And we're going to take this campaign to the next level where we're going to help people to understand and really look at the methods of grooming, the signs of grooming and really giving people tools, especially parents, of what they can do if they spot it. Mm. So there's you, me and Sammy Woodhouse um, and it's going to be an amazing campaign and we're really going to, you know, stop this stigma of people who feel they can't talk about it and break the taboos <laughs> and get people really on board and, and give them the tools. And, and for, you know, for me, talking about this in the Asian community um, and giving girls a voice is so, so important. So we are doing a very important yeah, job. Yeah, and we're thrilled that coming, you're on board with forward. that as well. Oh, I am so excited. I am, you know, this is what it's all about. And I'm just so excited to be working with Syrah. And I feel that together, you know, we can say things that perhaps um, are difficult to say. I no. can't say certain things. No. Syrah I can. can. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I will. <laughs>